So my name is uh, Dr. Debo Akande, I'm the Executive Advisor to the Governor for your state on agribusiness and also the Director General for your state agribusiness development agency, one of the critical uh, agencies under the Office of the Governor that was created um, two years ago by His Excellency uh, Governor Oluwase Yimakinde um, to uh, re-engineer Oyo State economy uh, through agribusiness and agriculture. Um, that is what the agency has been doing for the past two years, um, ensuring that the right kind of uh, a policy are put in place, um, ensuring that the state have a strategy that drives um, their implementation plan, and ensuring that the implementation itself is aligning with the overall objective of your state's uh, government to make this state uh, one of the great states in terms of uh, its comparative and competitive advantage in agriculture and agribusiness. Uh, we've ensured that logic, science and uh, data uh, directed our, our, our approach in agribusiness and that has yielded quite a lot of good results. Um, first of all, um, we have been able to attract private investors to the state um, at a uh, diverse level of the value chains of agriculture, um, small, medium, and, and also large um, um, enterprises have now seen Oyo State as a haven of, of investment. Um, in our agency, we've profiled 96 companies within the last two years um, that have shown interest in establishing here, and a good number of them have started establishing their own um, businesses uh, within the Oyo State. We have also uh, uh, gotten data around the new investments in agribusiness within the state within the last two years or three years that His Excellency has become the governor of the state. Um, we have uh, been able to attract 23 billion Naira uh, worth of investment um, and these are mostly in the processing uh, area which uh, they were in the kind of uh, place before when we came we did a basic uh, pilot study around uh, where there are concentration of private investors in the state uh, across the value chain, midstream, upstream and downstream. And it was clear to us that most of the investments are around the upstream, the production. I mean, the, pro the production, yes, I, I have on, in agriculture, little around the processing. So what we're seeing now is a paradigm shift, you know, that is required for any uh, state or any nation to say that it's building the right kind of env environment of uh, for agribusiness to thrive. So the investment around 23 billion is around uh, close, around um, processing areas. Um, uh, I mean, I could give example of, of Sultry um, uh, um, Limited in uh, Addo, Hawaii, and that has it, established a Subital uh, factory. Um, Subital is uh, extracted from um, cassava, you know, and this is uh, uh, overall the investment altogether is around 5 billion naira. Um, and this, um, um, processing center will, will, will swallow, if you can use that word, uh, nothing less than around 400 tons of cassava every week. Um, that means that the cassava producers within the state doesn't even have any reason to uh, complain of market any longer. And it's not alone. We have Brent farms that has put over 8.5 billion, you know, um, starch line, um, cassava flour line, um, that is now being uh, processing center in, uh, uh, at uh, Afijio and also Ido, you know, um, has been established. Um, we have rice processing centers that has been established in the state as well. Niji farms or Niji groups has quite a lot of investment that has been brought in the last two years as well. Um, our once moribund um, agri fabrication, uh, equipment fabrication center at Akpata uh, under former defunct Oisadem. Uh, it's been revamped completely now to become the center of excellence for agricultural equipment fabrication within the state and also training in equipment fabrication within the within the state uh, beyond that over 10,000 hectares of land in in, in uh, Isain is being developed as a farm estate by this particular company um, it's also engaged in a good number of other uh, businesses that include uh, processing the starch lines and, and cassava line as well um, in, within Fashola, uh, some of these investors are there. Also, Freeland Campina is establishing uh, uh, probably, the, if not the largest, or probably one of the largest uh, pasture, uh, uh, livestock pasture uh, uh, production, you know, within uh, uh, Fashola Industrial Hub. 
um, they will be processing some of their product within that, that place. Calf, product, calf uh, breeding as well is taking place. Chief Quills has uh, cultivated close to around uh, over 100 hectares of cassava within that location. They're expanding to 200. Swako, which is a, a southwest uh, body under Odua, also have close to around 100 hectares within that place as well. Industries within the place that are built uh, 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 within the Fashola Industrial Hub is now uh, kind of being uh, occupied by a good number of, of these private companies. With this still as even at early stage because this industrial hub is not yet completed. We are at 80 percent and, and private companies are already coming in you know to start their businesses and by the time that this uh, um, industrial hub is, uh, finishes um, we all see what it means you know to agriculture uh, within the state. All these things are done with a mindset of grooming or developing the economy, you know, re-engineering the economy of your state, expanding it through agribusiness, um, driving private investors to the state. But in addition to that as well, to also support all the structural problems that used to affect the smallholder farmers within the state, um, situating industrial hub in different locations within, within the state will overcome the problem of market for smallholder farmers. We overcome the, the problem of infra rural infrastructure dilapidation uh, within that particular location. We support uh, backward integration by, by private investors that are interested in farmers expanding their uh, production to support uh, their processing. Uh, most of the processing centers that are, are located within that place as well uh, will be used to uh, as, as a means of, uh, uh, of, of uh, apprenticeship you know, for young people. Um, I think I, it's essential to mention that within each orb as well, we have a sizable land that is going to be used for uh, youth um, enterprises um, as a startup. So um, uh, that's uh, that in relation to the private sector. Um, but in addition to that as well, we are forward looking state. Um, we want to ensure that uh, the critical gap that is existing and that is going to be existing in agriculture, um, which is the actor. Um, in this case, um, um, it is well documented in literature and of course with data that we have within the state as well that um, the current age of farmers now uh, above the age of 65 to going to 70 and this generation will soon uh, fade away. They've done their best for us um, as, as elders and fathers, you know, they've done all what they could do. Um, they're leaving a legacy behind but the next generation after them has not imbibed agriculture you know, as a means of, 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 of uh, economical or, or, or life. Um, so we are already grooming the next generation to fill that void. Um, and one of the critical things that has been done by His Excellency, uh, Governor Lua Sheimak, uh, to support uh, these uh, is the uh, training of youth and the state. Under the YEP pro uh, uh, program, Youth Entrepreneurship Agribusiness Program, over 3,300 youth has been trained. But in addition to that as well, some of our partners, you know, have also engaged in, in youth uh, training. Uh, International Institute of Tropical Agriculture with a good number of their projects, uh, working through our incubation center at Awe, um, have trained over 500 young people in diverse, on diverse projects. C1 project supported by the French government uh, was used to train close to over 300 uh, female precisely in agribusiness. And uh, the IFAD project, uh, um, IFAD supported project that uh, Agri Hub, that is situated within a highway um, incubation center, has trained over 200 young people. So, overall, we can say that we have trained over 4,000 of them. Um, we are working towards ensuring that we give enterprises to them. And this is going through a whole lot of um, strategy work. It, it's a lot. I know many of the young people are waiting. Um, um, but this is going to happen, this is going to take place. Um, but the interesting thing is that a good number of these young people, we profile close to around intents now, around 98 of them, has been supported one way or the other by some of these bilateral projects that we, with our partners. Um, we know close to around 89 of them, they're about now, that has been supported. Um, but not just supported, a good number of them have started a business by themselves. You know, we have their data now, we are profiling their farms, Despite the fact that they have started their business, as a matter of fact, you know, uh, they will all still be supported one way or the other. So we have that at the youth um, 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 level. Um, but also beyond that, we've moved a step further. You know, the younger ones at the secondary level. Um, we have uh, been able to train 1,270 young people in close to six schools um, in agribusiness enterprises. 
um, these young ones that used to see agriculture as a punishment in the past has now started imbibing agribusiness, not just from theoretical angle, because in each of those schools, the Ohio State government set up uh, enterprises uh, ranging from um, um, livestock production, poultry, horticulture, and even crop production using uh, mechanization. Um, so if you go to many of these schools, Fashion Grammar School, Methodist High School, Bishop Philip Academy, uh, Miresa Du, I know what have you, you know, you will see all this enterprise not being managed by adults, but being managed by the young, these young ones um, in their different schools. And manage, being managed profitably, you know. Um, uh, so it, it's, 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 a, it's a thing of joy for us that we are building um, the next generation. Not just for agricultural purposes, because the nutrition dimension is also there. Um, when they produce what is healthy in their, in their schools, they could also consume um, um, that. Uh, we are even seeing a trickle over uh, of, of what they are doing because a couple of them are starting these small businesses in their home um, along with their friends as well. To me, this is quite highly instructive and is helping us to build what is required in agribusiness within the state. Smallholder farmers are not left alone. Um, we, we are doing, um, we are providing support through what we call your NKS. Um, we'll be supporting a good number of states across all the local governments of the state, you know, um, with inputs, um, with the basic um, equipment um, support. Uh, we will also be supporting them through uh, advisory services, a, a different kind of an extension approach by young ones that has been trained. Um, um, and, and so this, this will uh, align uh, together. Lastly, I think it's going to be good to mention that um, what we have been waiting for in terms of the rural road and uh, uh, agro logistic and market development is started. Um, a, a sector NC is going to be commissioning the first you know, uh, of the road that we are going to be starting with. So we've waited a long time as well. The governor has committed quite a lot of resources for this uh, uh, funding to come. We have the fund now and we'll be uh, uh, going aggressively, if we can use that word, in rural road. The implication of this is that accessibility for smallholder farmers is going to be very strong, meaning that farmers from their farms who move their product easily, unlike the way it's been in the past, to, um, to market. And uh, many of these roads are quite linked to our agribusiness industrial hubs, you know, so it's easier for them to move their product to the hubs, you know, when they are, when they are ready uh, to sell them. So these are some of the things that uh, we have been doing um, in the state over the past uh, three years, and this is already proven the result that we are seeing.